Anki is an amazing tool, but it is intimidating AF. The first time I downloaded the app, I found myself scrolling through the forums looking for instructions on how to start making my own flashcards. And after clicking through a few threads, uh, it became clear that I was far too stupid to be using this software, so I rage quit and deleted the app. The truth is, Anki can be as simple or complex as you want it to be. And today, we're going to cover a foundational skill that every beginner can totally handle. And then we're going to slowly complicate the shiz out of it. There are a handful of skills that you can learn that will help you to get the most out of Anki. And understanding what an Anki note type is and how to create one is super low-hanging fruit because it's very easy to do and it allows you to make Anki exactly what you need it to be. And now that AI tools are ubiquitous, we can make flashcards that are super fancy and functional, even if you don't know how to code. I created a custom GPT which will help you make modifications to your Anki note type. All you have to do is explain to the custom GPT what you want your flashcard to look like, or if you are the artsy type, you can create a mock-up of what you want your flashcard to look like, maybe do both. Then, theoretically, all you need to do is copy the information it gives you into the appropriate front, back, or styling templates. I say theoretically because ChatGPT is kind of like a really knowledgeable friend that you call for help, and even though they're initially super optimistic and show up with a ton of energy and good ideas, eventually you hit a snag along the way, and then they'll just up and leave with only like 80% of the work actually done, and you're left alone to try and figure out what the crap is happening. In an effort to try and prevent this from happening to you, I went ahead and created some prompt templates with all of the information that you should consider and provide the custom GPT so that it knows how to help you and so it doesn't leave you stranded with a half working note type. You can find a link to all these materials in the video description below. We'll start with the basics and build from there. Hopefully by the end of the video, you have the confidence to start tinkering with your own flashcards. And I've got some tools that I'll share with you along the way. Flashcards are created from a template in Anki known as a note type. It's a collection of fields and styling information that Anki uses to be able to know how to organize the information and how to present it. Generally speaking, there are three types of notes that we use in Anki. Basic, which mimics the classic two-sided card with the question on the front and the answer on the back. Closed deletion, which is a sort of fill-in-the-blank type of card where you use context clues to be able to recall the answer and image occlusion, which is a type of card that allows you to hide select parts of an image to be able to quiz yourself on it. I'm going to ignore image occlusion in this video because it's kind of a different beast altogether. We can create brand new note templates or modify existing ones by navigating to the tools menu and clicking on manage note types. You can also get there by hitting control shift N. This will pull up a list of all of the note types that you have in your collection. If you don't have very many cards, you probably don't have very many note types listed here, but every time you download a shared deck, the note types that are used within that deck will be added here. The note types will stick around even if you end up deleting that deck, so you can keep using those note types going forward if you want. If we want to create a brand new note type, then all we have to do is click on add in the right upper hand corner, and then pick one of these OG note types here. If we want to modify an already existing note type, then we can scroll through and clone that note type. I'm going to create a basic style note type, so I'm actually going to click on this one here. And then choose a name for your brand new note type. And then click OK. And now we have a blank canvas on which to start our masterpiece. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is highlighted and then come over here to the right hand side and click on the fields to check out which kind of fields are in this note type. Fields are basically where we put stuff in our Anki flashcards. You don't have to use fields, but using fields gives you a little bit more granular control over where the information in your flashcard goes. It also gives you a little bit more control over customizing the appearance of that information. And importantly, if you plan on automating any portion of your flashcard creation later on down the line, then it's gonna make that a lot easier as well. And over here in this corner of the internet, we are very interested in automating whatever we can. In this fields menu, we have the option of adding new fields, repositioning fields, renaming fields, or deleting fields. For this specific flashcard, I'm envisioning 
four different fields to be used. So I'm gonna add two more fields. If you watched my last video, then you kind of got a sneak peek uh, of where this is going. But this is gonna be the note type that I use for a massive Pokemon deck that I created in my last video. So I've added and named the fields that I want to use and they all look appropriate. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. We should think of note types as having two constituent parts. One of them being the fields information, the other being styling or card template, which is where all of the styling information for each card is stored. If we click on the cards option over here on the right, this will pull up the card template. We see three main templates here. We have a front template, a back template, and a styling template. The front template is all the information that's going to be presented to us on the front of our flashcard before we flip it. The back template controls all of the information that's present on the reverse side of our flashcard. So after we've reviewed it and flipped it, this is what we'll see. And the last tab here is for styling. Um, this contains a bunch of CSS and it's going to affect what the actual look and appearance of our flashcard is. We'll come back to this in just a minute. Let's go back to the front template. And here, all we need to do is make sure that we add all of the fields that we want to be present on the front of our flashcard. So I see that I have my question field here already, so that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and add the images field because I want the images to be applied to the front of the flashcard. So now we have the images field showing up here. Now when I review my flashcard, I'm gonna see the question and I'm gonna see the image right beneath it. For the back template, this shows us the front side of the card with a little divider here, so it looks like this. And then on the back side, I want to see the name field followed by the type field. So this is the organization of our flashcard so far. It's important to note that if you would like to switch the order of these things, you would do that here in the card types browser menu option thing. But this is the order that I want. So I'm going to keep this as it is for now. And that's it really. This flashcard note type is done. Um, if we click save here, we can go ahead and start adding flashcards using this note type um, right now. Ta -da. That's all it takes to create a note type and to be able to customize it to display exactly the information that you're trying to show. But I don't know, it uh, feels pretty vanilla. So let's inject some flavor into this bad boy. We can also access the fields information within this creating a new flashcard interface by clicking on the fields button right here on the left of this toolbar. And likewise, we can also get to all of the cards information. So affecting our styling. So we're going to click on this for right now. And now we're going to take a closer look at the styling template. So Anki uses HTML and CSS to organize and style the flashcard which are the same languages or tools, things that are used to make websites in the real world. We can also use JavaScript to give our flashcards a little bit more functionality, create some interactive elements, if you will. But let's not get carried away with that just yet. Let's just have a closer look at this styling template. Now it's very easy to get lost in the weeds at this point, so I'm gonna try and just keep things super basic still. If we look at the styling that comes stock with this flashcard, we can see this dot card class, which is the default class for our flashcard. So if we make any changes to this, that's going to affect everything within our flashcard. Now, if we wanted to change the appearance of a specific field, we could say, create a new class. So if I wanted to create an images class to apply to my images, I could do that by just putting something like this here. And then every time we reference this class in the front or back template, it will apply the styling associated with this class. So for our flashcard, if we wanted to change the font, this is where we would change the font style. We can change the font size. We can change where the text in our flashcard aligns, whether in the center, um, to the left, or to, to the left, or to the right. We can also change the text color and we can change the background color of our flashcard. Ta-da! That's assaulting my eyes. I'm gonna change it back to white. Look, I realized I may have just lost more than 50% of you with that last bit there. The truth is, I don't even really fully understand this stuff. Thanks to AI, non-coding normies like you and I can still make upgrades to our Anki note types. 
and it really requires a very basic understanding of HTML and CSS. Full disclosure, this custom GPT is still a work in progress. Will it help you customize your Anki note types? Yes. Will it build the feature-rich flashcard of your dreams? Probably not. But if you just want to mess around and see what you can make, and you don't mind learning a little bit on the fly, then this can be a lot of fun. When I was creating this custom GPT, I first started out making a pretty simple design, which I did a pretty good job of. I needed to make some minor tweaks to get the layout and the spacing exactly how I wanted it, but I'm trying to learn how to do this stuff kind of along the way, so I don't mind the practice. It's good for learning. I like to use the W3Schools website to look up the specifics on HTML or CSS topics as I experience hiccups along the way. This usually helps me get back on the right track. I am working on bettering myself through education, but it's going to take some time, particularly with my schedule. But that's okay. Right? So in the meantime, have fun experimenting with your Anki note types and using this custom GPT and see what you can make. I've got a link in the description to some of the stuff that I've built that works pretty well in case you want to include those in your flashcards. Things like interactive image galleries, which allow you to toggle through different images, some drop down boxes to be able to hide information within your flashcard, uh, some timers. That's about it. Let me know if you're able to build something really cool or if you really are good at CSS and HTML and, and want to fix my custom GPT. Okay, thanks, bye.